Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to the presentation this evening. Um, Ms. Lena Joe from the Office of Navajo Nation Scholarship and Financial Assistance will be presenting on the Navajo Nation Scholarship Program. Uh, my name is Todd Wilcox. Ashian Nishle, Kizani Bashishin, Kiaani Bashiki, Do Tapahe Bashanale. And I'm the 21st century coordinator with Winslow Residential Hall. Um, our program, again, is focused on, it's an after school based program focused on academic enrichment opportunities through um, tutoring, um, culture and awareness, wellness, and college and career preparation, um, which is what our program does emphasize. So, as part of that, and as students are preparing for the next, um, I guess that next um, step in their educational journey, going to some type of post-secondary institution, um, whether it be a two-year college, four-year college, or technical school, vocational-based program, um, this information is, is also um, needed for that. So we thank you. Um, we welcome our, our audience. Um, we have, a, I see one of our parents and students on, on, on the Zoom this evening. Um, so I'll give the floor to Ms. Joe. Um, you know, you can go ahead and you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lena Joe, and I'm the financial aid counselor with Fort Defiance Agency. Um, the Office of Navajo Nation Scholarship and Financial Assistance. And Tohead Leaning Shon Tatni Sani Bashishin Ado Ashihi Dashiche, Do Kentlichini Etashinel, Do Ayusin Ashade Etash last E. Le Shiprock, New Mexico, Do Hushte, thirty miles south of Shiprock. E Ade Ade Ayusin Asha. I've been working with the Navajo Nation Scholarship Program now 18 years with the program and 20 years with the Navajo Nation. And um, this is my first time doing a Zoom meeting. I'm a little bit rusty, so <laughs> bear with me. Okay. Okay, about the ONSFRA program, um, here's the background information. The Office of Navajo Nation Scholarship and Financial Assistance provides enrolled members of the Navajo Nation an opportunity to achieve their educational goals. Formerly known as the Navajo Higher Education Office, the ONSFA was established in 1972 when the Navajo Nation entered into a Public Law 93-638 contract with the Bureau of Indian Affairs to administer the higher education grant. The ONSFA office housed within the, is housed within the Department of the Net Education. And we are located in Winderock, Arizona, in the um, education building. The ONSFA awards financial aid and scholarship from several sources, including federal funds from the Higher Education Grant, Navajo Nation funds, trust funds, and corporate funds. In 2018, the ONSFA awarded more than 24 million in financial aid and scholarships to approximately 6,000 students seeking a college degree or certificate. And um, we don't have our report from the 2019 yet, so this is all going to be information from 2018. And we have five agency offices. And the five agency offices are available to serve students Offices are in Tuba City, Arizona, Chinle, Arizona, Shiprock, New Mexico, Crown Point, New Mexico, and Winderock, Arizona. And the toll-free numbers to all these agency offices are on the ONSFA student portal at www.onsfa.org. 
um, and it's available to help students navigate the ONSPA application process. Each office is staffed with a senior financial aid counselor, a financial aid counselor, and off an office specialist. Each agency staff provide presentation at high schools, chapters, and other career fairs held across the Navajo Nation on ONSPA policies and procedures and other funding sources. Okay, about um, Article 5, Pledge of Service to the Navajo Nation. The purpose of the Pledge of Service is for college graduates to apply their acquired skills, training, and knowledge to assist the Navajo Nation by returning to the Navajo Nation and seek employment in their appropriate profession. Students aren't required to come back to the Navajo Nation upon their graduation. However, we would encourage that they come back and help with the development of the Navajo Nation. And here are the five agency offices that I mentioned earlier and a map of where they're located. Shinley Agency Office is in the purple shaded color. Crown Point Agency is in the orange shaded color. Fort Defiance Agency is uh, the green, the light green. And Shiprock Agency is in the white area on the north side. And then Tuba City Agency, um, also known as Western Agency, is all in the yellow shaded area. And then Crown Point Agency is also known as Eastern Agency Office. Okay, um, chapter affiliation. Each of the Navajo Nation's 110 chapters are served by one of the five Office of Navajo Nation Scholarship and Financial Assistance Agency offices, including Chinle, Fort Defiance, Crown Point, Shiprock, and Tuba City. Applicants are asked to enter the chapter they are affiliated with on their application. This information is used to determine which agency office will review an applicant's file and also for reporting purposes. Students who are unsure of which chapter to enter on their application are urged to consider the chapter nearest to their residence or the chapter at which their parents or grandparents are registered to vote. So if you're not sure what your a chapter affiliation is, ask your parents, grandparents, and, um, and just know that it is um, a required field on your application. So make sure you know what chapter you're affiliated with. Okay, here's um, um, a listing, a chapter listing um, of the five agency offices. And we have 110 chapters on the Navajo Nation. So if you can take a look at um, under Fort Defiance Agency. Okay, so if you're from the Delcon area, Indian Wells, Jedito, Clagato, all Steamboat, Tisto, White Cone, these are all the areas within Fort Defiance Agency. So if you're affiliated with that chapter, and then you would fall under Fort Defiance Agency. However, if you're affiliated with um, another chapter like Loop, Navajo Mountain, Aljato, Shanto, Talani Lake, you would fall under Tuba City Agency. So that's where your file would remain. Okay, federal student aid. Um, okay, so if you haven't already applied for your FAFSA, now is the time to apply. So for the upcoming school year, 21-22, you got to use your parents' 2019 income tax information to complete your FAFSA. And it opens every year in October, October 1st. And um, I'm not sure when, when it really ends, probably in June. Um, so uh, if you haven't done your FAFSA, please get it done as soon as you can. And there's three types of federal student aid. 
number one grants, which is free money. And grants are usually based on financial need and don't have to be repaid. For instance, Pell Grant, you could become eligible for Pell Grant. Last year, students got a max of $6,345 for their Pell Grant for the academic year. So you get half of that for fall and the other half for spring. Okay, and the other type of grant could be um, Student Educational Opportunity Grant. So all this is based on your FAFSA application. And then number two is loans, borrowed money. Loans are an investment in your future, but remember they must be repaid with interest. So we um, usually discourage students from taking any loans, not unless they're in their last year of their bachelor or their master's degree or PhD, and, and then you know they can um, borrow money. The, don't start borrowing money as a freshman, sophomore in college because you know you're going to accrue so much loans that you have to repay in the future. Number three is work study, earn money. A work study job lets you earn money while you're in school. So you can check with the financial aid office um, if you want to pursue work study. Okay, um, once you complete your FAFSA, it gets processed and it takes about two to three business days. So when your FAFSA is completed, it comes out in the form of a student aid report. So you should be getting your student aid report once you complete your FAFSA. And um, if you, when you complete your FAFSA, if you um, enter incorrect information, it's gonna slow the processing of your application. So make sure all the information is correct when you complete your FAFSA. And student aid report includes expected family contribution. And um, e EFC is used by the school as to how much the student is eligible for. And then students should complete their financial aid file with the school and must be admitted into a degree seeking program enrolled in certain amount of um, credit hours. And sometimes if you're FAFSA application is questionable by the financial aid office at the school you plan to attend, you could get selected for verification and that could take a while. That's why it's best to do your FAFSA early in the year, beginning October 1st. Okay, school financial aid office will determine eligibility based on several factors, expected family contribution, Again, enrollment status, whether you're full-time, part-time, and a degree-seeking student, and cost of attendance. Um, it's also based on independent or dependent status, and they base it on, on whether you're going to live on campus or off campus, and um, your cost of education is how, is, this is how it's determined. Um, whether you're going to live on campus or off campus. And in the cost of education, what's included in there is your tuition and fees, your books and supplies, room and board, transportation, miscellaneous, and any personal needs. Okay, so here they give an example of a cost of attendance. So um, $6,500 okay uh, is an example of a cost of attendance with a zero efc expected family contribution and then enrollment is full time okay if your cost of attendance is six thousand five hundred and then you you receive three thousand ninety seven from pell grant and the navajo nation two thousand five hundred it equals to five thousand five hundred and ninety seven so if you subtract this amount, fifty-five ninety-seven from sixty-five hundred, your need is going to be nine hundred and three. So that's that's your need, and they usually don't want students to go over their costs of um, attendance. Okay, 
um, application deadlines. Our deadline date is June 25th every year. And um, this is for fall and spring. And then if you decide to wait out and not attend classes until spring or winter, and then November 25th would be the deadline to submit all your required documents. Okay, so when you apply for fall, that application is going to take care of spring as well. And again, here's our website, www.omsfa.org. And this is what our homepage looks like. Okay, when you go to this website, and this is what it's going to look like. And um, what you're going to do is apply online, where, the, where you see the red circle. That's what you click on to apply online with, uh, with our office. Okay, um, application submitted by the fall, winter, spring deadline cover the entire academic year. Um, so what you're going to do is select either the full-time or the part-time application. And, um, and you're going to complete all the yellow fields Okay, all the yellow fields is what's required on the application. Okay, and it continues here. Um, applications are submitted before midnight the next day. And um, application, online application opens on March 15th every year. So right now our online application is open. You're um, welcome to apply now. And it takes about three, two to three business days for your application to appear on our database because our office specialists, they have to go through a batching process first. Once you apply, you won't, it won't appear on our database right away. It takes about two to three days. Okay, so once you complete the yellow fields, you can go down to the bottom of the application. Make sure you clicked on the, uh, that you're giving consent for our office, ONSFA, to, let's see, also releasing your personal information for employment internship and scholarship opportunities and that you accept the contract and this is um, the contract here and if you want to review it more here you click on um, here this area to review the contract and it's just basically saying that you gotta to apply full-time you gotta complete 12 new credit hours per semester 12 hours for fall and 12 hours for spring for to get continued funding with the Navajo Nation Scholarship. And um, the application is good for the entire academic year. And again, it says here that it takes two to three business days for your um, information to show on our database. Okay, here's um, the full-time applicant checklist. Okay, so these are all the documents that's required by June 25th of each year. Okay, so for this year, if you haven't um, applied, you can go again to our website and submit an online application we'll need your certificate of Indian blood and we require an official certificate of Indian blood and for new applicants we can accept an unofficial CIB just for one semester so if you don't have an official CIB um, you can submit a photocopy of that and we can use that for one semester to award the student but by spring, by January 2022, we would need an official CIB. And there's a, there's a form 
on our website call um, CIB request form. You can download that, fill it out, and submit it to our office, and we can turn it into vital records for you. And in return, they'll send us your official CIB. And then transcripts. We're going to need your official high school transcript. Don't send it now, but um, go ahead and send it until after you graduate from high school. So let's say if your high school graduation date is May, May 15, and then you got to wait until after that to um, request for your official high school transcripts from the registrar at your high school or from your um, academic um, counselor and um, get that to our office and you can mail it. Don't upload the um, transcript as well as the CIB, they can't be uploaded. Okay, if you, um, if you take, uh, if you took dual enrollment, you're taking college courses, we'll need your official college transcript as well by June 25th. And then letter of admission, we would need from the school of your choice. Let's say, for instance, if you, if you plan to attend Northern Arizona University this fall, we would need a letter of admission from NAU's admissions office, not from the athletic director, not from the counselor. It's got to come from the admissions office, and usually it'll say, congratulations, you've been admitted to NAU for the fall 2021 term, signed by an admissions office. And this document can be uploaded to your student portal. Okay, and then the next item is financial need analysis. The FNA form you can also find on our website. What you would need to do is complete the top portion of the FNA form. And um, I gave um, Mr. Wilcox um, some packets. So um, you can pick up a packet from him in the FNA form you'll find as well as the CIB requests in the packet. Uh, financial need analysis is required. You would need to complete your FAFSA first. Once you complete your FAFSA, you take this FNA form or send it to the college or university you'll be attending this fall. And they're the only ones that have access to your FAFSA. As for the Navajo Nation Scholarship, we do not have access to your FAFSA. So we wouldn't know um, how to complete this FNA form. And so therefore, please give it to the financial aid office at your school. So if, you're, if you plan to go to NAU or ASU or NPC, you take it to the financial aid office at that school for their completion, and they need to be listed on your FAFSA application. And this FNA determines how much the Navajo Nation is going to fund you, and we can fund up to $2,500 per semester. Okay, graduation degree checklist is required for all juniors, seniors part-time applicants, um, and also graduate students. So if you're an incoming freshman, and then you're not required to submit your graduation checklist until you become a junior. It's, a checklist is just a list of all the classes you're going to need to take for the degree program you plan to pursue. For instance, if you want to go into a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, and then it's going to list all your nursing courses and all the prerequisites to get your Bachelor's of Science degree in Nursing, signed by your advisor with an anticipated date of graduation posted on there. So, but that's, again, that's not required until you become a junior, senior in college. And then course registration, I'm sorry, course registration. 
um, there's no deadline for this, but we encourage students to submit it once they enroll and register for classes, because that helps us in determine, determining the award for, for each student. Um, you, yes. I think that was the part-time checklist you had up just, just now. I'm sorry, really? Yeah. Oh, so okay. Oh. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I think I went too far. But yeah, that's um, the graduation degree checklist. Let's go back to the full-time application checklist. Okay, so that, here's the graduation degree checklist. It is, again, required for junior, seniors, graduate students. And then part-time, there's a, a separate um, application, online application. You would have to click on um, the part-time application. Again, a CIB is required, which I just covered, as well as the transcript, the letter of admission. Then the, here is the graduation checklist and the course registration. These two are required for part-time, and we can fund up to three courses. And I think it's gonna give more information on part-time as we go further down. Okay, so, um, okay, once you apply online to our office, um, you give it about two business days, and then you can go back to um, our website, the ONSFA website, and go to um, create an account, which is right here. First, you're going to apply online, okay, to the ONSFA student portal and you're going to create an account okay so when you create an account this is what it's going to look like when you click on create an account you're going to enter your name your social security number date of birth and um, come up with a username and a password and submit it okay and this is going to allow you um, you're going to be able to log in regularly to your student portal and you're going to be able to check your document status. You're going to be able to upload your documents. Again, letter of admission, class schedule, graduation checklist. Those are the only three documents that can be uploaded. But as far as the financial need analysis, the CIP and the transcripts, they can't be uploaded. And also, it'll give you the ability to review your award and denial letters. And you can even print your own letters here. Okay. Um, student portal view missing documents. Again, you logged in. You log in as a student. You click on the financials tab and select FA missing documents. So once you do that, this is going to pop up and it's going to tell you what's missing. Right here. Okay. Okay, it indicates here no notes, um, no notes to read. And the student here, Barney Rubble, had applied for that academic year, but the course section and department hasn't been set, so I guess it's not really completed here in this case. But you're going to be able to check to see what documents you're missing when you, uh, when you log in. Okay. Uh, okay, there's three types of full-time undergraduate um, scholarship and financial assistance. Okay, the first one being need-based. Need-based is based on financial need. And the FAFSA needs to be completed. And again, the FNA form needs to be submitted. And we can fund up to 2,500 per semester, which I already covered. And then the other full-time undergraduate um, award would be Chief Manuelito. It's all merit-based. 
and students would need to be a degree seeking student pursuing an associates of arts degree, associates of science degree, bachelor of science and bachelor of arts. And students would need to complete their ACT tests and um, they would have to have a GPA of 3.0 or better. And we'll look at the table here in a little bit. Navajo language course is required. Navajo government course is required. And this funds 3,500 per semester for Chief Manuelito. Okay, so, um, and then the last one is no need. So um, no need is based on, again, the financial need analysis. If your parents have a high income and as a result, you don't have a need and your income, parents income goes over your cost of education. And then um, we can still give you 1000 per semester as to, as opposed to nothing at all. Okay, here's the part-time scholarship for undergraduate students. We can award up to three courses and the courses must be listed on your degree checklist for us to fund you that it's required as part of your degree program and the award amount varies based on your course level so let's say as a freshman sophomore you're taking lower level courses like english 101 um, biology 201 all those are lower level courses and that funds 250 per course up to three courses that's 750 dollars once you become a junior senior in college you'll be taking the upper division courses which are the 300 level 400 level courses and that funds 500 dollars a poor a course times three would be 1500 dollars. so that's an example of how we do part-time uh, funding and then we also, once you complete your associate degree, bachelor degree, and you want to pursue more um, in your education, you want to go into graduate school, we do offer graduate funding as well. There's full-time and there's part-time graduate awards. For graduate students um, pursuing a master's level degree, funding is based on the point system. So we can fund students anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000 per semester. For part-time, we can only do up to two courses at 750 times two would be $1,500. And again, the courses must be listed on the degree checklist to receive part-time funding. Okay, maintaining eligibility for full-time undergraduates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you got to complete 12 or more credit hours per semester and maintain a 2.0 cumulative GPA per semester. And let's say we award you this fall, um, by the end of fall term in December, we would need your official transcript in December with your grades posted on there. Um, so make sure the, the grades are posted when you request for your transcript to be sent to our office. Part-time undergraduates need to complete all courses, also 2.0 GPA. Um, students got to receive a C or better for the courses funded. For graduate students, they have to have a 3.0 or better they have to have a B or better for each course funded and again they would need to submit their official transcript at the end of each sem semester okay here's the chief Manuelito scholarship um, it was established in 1980 to recognize all the high achieving high school graduates and the man known as Hustine Had okay and he encouraged Navajo um, people to seek their education and to protect and preserve the Navajo tradition 
and students um, need to meet their criteria for the Chief Manuelito Scholarship. And again, it funds 7,000 per academic year. Um, Chief, Manuel Chief Manuelito Scholarship recipients are required to maintain a 3.0 GPA and also to earn 12 or more credit hours per semester. And Chief, here's the Chief Manuelito requirements. Um, students gotta be admitted into a post-secondary education and seeking a Bachelor of Science degree, Bachelor of Arts, Associates of Science, Associates of Arts. Okay, and you see the yellow um, shaded area that um, indicates Certificate Associates of Applied Science and Bachelor of Applied Science degrees are not eligible for Chief Manuelito. So, and those are vocational courses like automotive or um, any course um, um, that, um, um, that's under the certificate or Associates of Applied Science or Bachelor of Applied Science don't apply. Um, okay, so the minimum GPA and corresponds to the ACT score. Okay, C graph. Um, completion of required courses, Navajo language, you got one, you need to complete one unit, high school, or one plus college credit. So if you're going to take the Navajo language in high school, they offer it um, two semesters, Navajo one and Navajo two. But if you're going to take it at a college level, it's all, you can only take it just one semester. And with the Navajo government, um, it, you can take that one semester at the high school level as well as at the college um, level. And 24-3 rule, okay. If you don't qualify as a high school student, high school graduate for the Chief Manuelito, if maybe your GPA is low or your ACT score is low, and if you took um, college level credit hours while in high school, we would need your um, college transcript because a lot of students tend to qualify for Chief Manuelito under the 24-3 rule, which is completing 24 college level credit hours and with a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or better. And you can get on the Chief Manuelito that way. And also Chief Manuelito or 24-3 rule can apply. So if you didn't, you wanted to get on the Chief Manuelito and you didn't take college courses while in high school or you didn't qualify as a high school graduate, you can always um, earn the Chief Manuelito um, this upcoming year during the fall 21 and spring 22 semesters. So by next fall, fall 2022, you could qualify for Chief Manuelito under the 24-3 rule. And here's the table that I mentioned earlier. So um, let's say by the time you graduate from high school, and your GPA is at um, a 3.9, 3.8 or better, your ACT score can be um, as low as 21. Okay, if your GPA is at, um, they say 3.4 by the time you graduate from high school, your ACT score has to be a 24 or better. So that's how we count the ACT. And I don't know how many of you completed your ACT, and I think there might be another testing coming up, but we would need your score by June 25th. Okay, just a review of what I um, covered. Uh, was your 2122 FAFSA, which is available online if you haven't done so. And again, it opens October 1st every year. 
and then re remember to reapply to ANSFA every year beginning March 15th for the um, upcoming year. And then if you're transferring, we need a new letter of admission and financial need analysis from the new school. So let's say you apply to um, ASU um, already, but you change your mind and you decide, you know, I'll, I'll go to a two-year college instead and finish at a two-year college level and work my way to a four-year. And then you decide to go to uh, Mesa Community College, for instance. We would need a letter of admission from Mesa Community College and a financial need analysis from Mesa Community College. And we would need a statement from you, which you can email to our office saying that you change your mind, you decide to go to MCC instead of ASU, and need to let us know that you're making those changes. Um, otherwise, if your file is complete to ASU, you're gonna get awarded to ASU. And then after the fact, you know, um, once we find out that you're gonna be attending another school instead of ASU, and then we would have to request for those funds back from ASU. Um, because, and those funds need to be put back into the account where it came from before we can reissue um, a check to you, to, to the new school. So keep that in mind. Just make sure you know what school you want to uh, attend. And also keep us informed because we get thousands of applicants every year. And then also to keep in mind, you got to maintain good academic progress, okay? If for some reason you fall below during the fall semester, um, let's say you fall below, you only completed nine hours instead of 12 hours, or your GPA went below, <coughs> excuse me, the required 2.0, let's say you earned a 1.5, We'll still fund you again during the spring semester, but you'll be put on probation. So during your probationary period, you gotta make sure that you complete the 2.0 GPA and 12 new hours, no repeats. Okay. And these are some common mistakes to avoid. Um, some students tend to transpose their social security numbers or census numbers or date of birth. So when you apply to ONSFA, make sure you have your correct social security number, your correct census number and your date of birth because you could be flagged for this and this could delay, delay the process in <clears throat> um, receiving your award. And also, submitting unofficial copy or copies of documents like CIB transcripts. Again, we need official CIB, we need official transcripts. And not completing the required number of credit hours, um, which is um, if you go falling below the 12 hours, make sure you complete 12 new hours every semester, 12 or more. And the next one is ONSFA online application is mobile friendly. You can use your tablet, your smartphone, and be sure to submit until you see a confirmation page. Online application for the academic year. Academic year 21-22 is good for fall 21, spring 22, winter 22, summer 22. And please make sure you submit your application on or before the deadline. Again, the deadline for fall is June 25th. But if you wish to go to school until spring 22, then November 25th is the deadline. Wow, okay. So um, are there any questions from anyone?